It is Tuesday, the 23rd day of April, 2013. I am your host, Alex Jones, and we're going to be live here on the Lord's Willing, three hours. Well, where to start? Uh, you know, globally, they're pushing for national and global internet sales taxes and also money transfer taxes, basically any type of online activity taxes which also doubles as surveillance. And the IRS already says it's the regulations that you're supposed to report to them every online transaction you make. And you're supposed to report all your medical records uh, and whether you have insurance or not to the IRS. It is to be the grand controller of everything you do with the Fifth Amendment uh, in the ash heap of history. And now internet sales tax advances after Obama endorsement. Notice suddenly they passed CISPA in the House, internet uh, tracking, taxing, uh, control system, hundreds of billions of dollars to big defense contractors to spy on you and your family. We're talking, you know, 10 billion contracts, uh, $10 billion contracts per company uh, with just dozens and dozens of them getting 2 billion, 15 billion, 10 billion, uh, just off the chart gang raping. So you pay to be gang raped. Uh, and now uh, they want the feds to basically administer the delivery of sales tax to the states and, of course, administrative fees for the feds. This is absolutely unbelievable. Uh, but it's what you, uh, of course, have to expect. And they try to play off small businesses against people uh, saying, oh, well, brick and mortar is in trouble because of this. No, brick and mortar is in trouble because of the fact that America has been deindustrialized and the economy is being turned off. And brick and mortar is in trouble uh, because uh, of the fact that they haven't been competitive. That's the issue. Brick and mortar that is competitive is very, very successful. Look at Apple stores with their brick and mortar uh, bringing in the slave goods. People want to go in. They want to talk. They want to find out. There's special deals when you go in. There's all sorts of other little mom and pop operations that are successful because of one word, service. But this is the classic thing like they did back in the 20s. These trucks are driving on roads you pay for, and they're commercial. They're making money. Let's come up with driver's license, commercial license, and tax them to drive because they're making money off you know what you pay for. Well, those truck drivers pay taxes too. Those companies pay taxes too. You just end up paying in the price of the goods for the taxes they've got to pay. And then they extend driving as a privilege, which it's not. On to everybody else, and hence the fraud of driver's license by the 50s that are paper licenses and now biometric national ID cards. So we're going to be going over uh, all of that today. And then, of course, the big news. It's up at DrudgeReport.com in the middle column. It is a Steve Watson article. Boston, residents ordered out of their homes at gunpoint by SWAT teams. And we have the photos and videos. In fact, I've had Kurt Nemo add some photos, or he's adding them right now, uh, of the, that citizens took and sent us of, of, of police and military pointing guns at people in their front yards and in their windows and a, uh, you know taking women out of the houses, and then the woman puts her hands down, so they push her or shove her. Uh, there's video of that, and Bloomberg is coming out saying this is the new way. We've got to get rid of the Constitution. But it's official. The uh, Wall Street Journal, the Wall Street Journal, uh, declares the USA to be a battlefield. And that means martial law, suspending your due process for the banker uh, rendering uh, uh, of the nation. Here's the Daily Mail. The controversial... Uh, moment, SWAT teams ordered innocent neighbors out of their houses at gunpoint during door-to-door -door searches for the Boston bomber. It's not controversial. This was the suspension of rights. This went on citywide. Bloomberg says interpretation of Constitution will have to change after Boston bombing. See, it's not just the Second Amendment he wants. He wants it all. We're going to be breaking that down and the latest on what is clearly a patsy setup, false flag. 
I'm Darren McBreen, and these are some of the new items that are available now at InfoWarsShop.com. Alert the public to Obama's blatant abuse of power with the new Obama t-shirt. Obama's joker face on the front and come and take it on the back. It's time to publicly call him out for what he is, a tyrant. Defend the Second Amendment with our top seller come and take it t-shirts. And look at that, women's cut tank tops and t-shirts now available. Nice hat. Plus, the Don't Tread on Me flag. And now you can become a micro distributor of the InfoWars magazine. Plus, get your own copy delivered right to your door each and every month. And if you're tired like I am of you and your family being exposed to polluted drinking water, get the Pro One High Performance Water Filter. It gets rid of all pathogenic bacteria, cyst, fluoride, heavy metals, and numerous other contaminants. So join the revolution at InfoWarsShop.com. Ladies and gentlemen, there are a lot of questions swirling around the tragic Boston bombings of eight, nine days ago last Monday. Monday before this Monday. But what we know undoubtedly is that the power structure and the propaganda media is seizing on this, uh, basically foaming at the mouth, saying you've got to give up all your rights, the entire Bill of Rights, no First Amendment, no Second, no Fourth, no Fifth, no Tenth, cameras, microphones, streetlights listening uh, to you and watching you, uh, checkpoints everywhere. Uh, entire cities must be ordered to be on lockdown anytime there's a gunman anywhere. Uh, every city needs tens of millions of dollars worth of bomb uh, detecting and destroying robots, uh, warrantless uh, searches, uh, just tens of billions to be spent on more high-tech cameras on and on. Bloomberg and King and uh, McCain are all in the news saying we have got to basically abolish the Bill of Rights and the Constitution. Meanwhile, 520 plus people were shot and killed, many of them innocents, by gangbangers in Chicago. In Chicago, just in 2012, and they're set to break that number this year in a city where they've taken all of the citizens' guns. A great uh, old American city of Chicago where we're on the radio on 1530 a.m. And you look at everywhere else with crime off the chart. It's where guns are highly restricted. Like Boston, like New York, like Detroit, like Los Angeles. Uh, look, at, look at cities in Connecticut where they have very strong gun control laws. And you look at areas with almost no gun control, lower crime rates. And, and, and I know we've talked about this at nauseum, but the system is engaged in a cold-blooded power trip. A cold-blooded power grab because they get hundreds of billions of dollars a year. In fact, guys, pull up the 2012 budget for Homeland Security. If memory serves, one part of it was $84 billion. And then there was supplemental of another $60 billion and then other funding just to the anti-terrorism part, mind you, not the other agencies. There's 37 agencies uh, under it. But the last number I saw was over $200 billion a year. And, and a few months ago, and Erin Dykes wrote about this, Big Sis came out and she said in a press conference, she said, you will not cut our funding. And it was a cut in the growth of it of more than 10% a year, or there will be more terror attacks. Now, let me ask you, is there a motive to let terrorism happen or provocateur terrorism or stage terrorism to get $200 billion a year domestically? And that's what this is. You go to college now, it's all about scholarships and homeland security, data mining, how to spy, how to profile. Hey, how about we profile the out of control kleptocratic government? How about we look at those groups? The budget request was 57 billion and they got 47.4, but that's just for the overall office of DHS, not for the 37 agencies. If you count all the money, quote, law enforcement agencies or quasi-law uh, enforcement homeland security agencies, 
I think it's about 10 of the 30 plus agencies. It's over 200 billion dollars. And now under cybersecurity, they're talking about a budget for cybersecurity over 50 billion dollars a year. And they're talking about every four years when they get budgetary uh, you know, oversight and then refund it, kind of like the FAA is funded in four year spurts. Uh, they're talking about over, again, $200 billion. So we're talking about hundreds of billions of dollars. It's like the Pentagon budget is $1.1 trillion a year. Guys, check that. Pull up Pentagon budget. But then they have supplemental that's over $800 billion a year, and that's not even counting black funding, secret funding, which is estimated to be... 50 to 100 billion, no one really knows. They use narcotics traffic, you name it. Global narcotics traffic into the U.S. is 500 billion. Total global narcotics uh, profits are estimated to be well over a trillion dollars. And you heard it right. The United States is almost half the world market in illegal drugs. And I tell you, the government had a great strategy to make drugs illegal, hype them up as cool with Hollywood, put a lot of money into it so it's seen as avant-garde and nouveau riche and uh and uh you know a, a get rich quick scheme yeah look at that article from the center for strategic budgetary assessments uh it says the dod includes a 553 billion dollars in discretionary funding five billion in mandatory funding an additional 118 billion in requested wars in afghanistan by the way, that again, these are whitewash numbers. If you pull up the numbers, it's 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 almost two trillion some years. And I tell you, the, these numbers we're getting from government sites are absolute crud, because I've I mean I've seen them break down the numbers in Congress when they talk about the real the real cost of the entire thing. In fact, watch this, watch this Pentagon budget over one trillion. Watch this Pentagon budget over one trillion. And then you learn it's actually over that. One trillion Pentagon budget cut is possible but not wise. Now that's a decade long cut. Defense, two trillion divides Obama and Romney. Defense spending a spike, 2.1 trillion under Romney. 1.2 trillion for national security, there it is. Unbelievable. The point is, is that they reported on two trillion missing two days before 9-11. Watch this. Two trillion missing Pentagon. Look at this. Go ahead and punch this up for me, guys. CBS News. 2.3 trillion missing from Pentagon. So I'm sorry, it's 2.3 trillion. That's the type of stuff that we're talking about here. And that's why they want this takeover. Now, let me just stop here and reset on air so I can calmly uh, attempt to go over uh, all of this today. Let me tell you uh, some of the news that I'm gonna be breaking down here. Number one, they are using uh, the events of 9-11 to radically re-engineer the society. And despite all the basic liberties and freedoms that have been overrun, butchered, attacked, dismantled, decimated, uh, firebombed by the criminals that have invaded the country who want to be above the law under globalism and want to tie us down with bureaucratic tyranny, classical tyranny in our face, it did not keep us safe. You notice that. We're in debt. The country's going bankrupt. We're hated worldwide. Over a million Iraqis are dead. Six, 7,000 U.S. troops just from combat injuries. That's a conservative number. Tens of thousands more committed suicide. All of this going on in this psychopathic globalist push for world domination. And now you have 400 troops, 2,000 police, down there at the Boston Marathon, searching people's bags, you name it, a drill going on right where the bomb happens, and it did not stop the terrorist attack that killed three people and injured 100. That you would think was the end of the world. I mean, they're having bomb scares in hundreds of cities and towns, total panic. If a box blows out of the back of a truck, 
uh, you know, in Phoenix, they've got bomb squads for hours, shutting everything down and ordering everyone to evacuate. And if you don't evacuate, they come to your house and drag you out by your hair and point guns at you. And I saw on CNN a woman who lived by a park uh, in Boston in the suburb of what, Watertown. And she's out there with her kids and the helicopter flies over and says, get in your house. And the police drive by in hundreds of photos and videos and point guns at people. And I mean, it can be a 10 year old blonde haired kid, clearly not the suspect, or it could be a 14 year old black woman, black girl, black child. I've seen the video and they point guns at her. Yeah, oh, you must be the suspect. Yeah, we're looking for a 19 year old uh, Caucasian literally the definition of a Caucasian from the Caucasus, you're looking for a white guy. And here, let's, let, let's, let's have a blonde woman walk out with her family and then let's, uh, she, she lowers her hands for a minute, let's poke her and, 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 you know, slap at her and tell her, get your hands up, you piece of trash. And the videos and the photos from our listeners pouring in, they'll get up in their window and start taking photos of the cops and the cops aim a gun right at them. It's all about them putting their hands on you. Take the Texas State Police. And, and guys, cue this video up for the next segment for TV viewers. For radio listeners, just type in, just type in uh, uh, two girls, one glove. Infowars.com. And, and, and they pull the women over. No due process. No nothing. They claim you know, that they thought they might be speeding. And they sit there with the same glove and go in both sisters' orifices. I mean, a total assault, ladies and gentlemen. You, you could, you know, get, who knows, hepatitis, anything. You don't know. E. coli, who knows. And, and I mean, the, and, and, and the trooper forces her hand in. I mean, you can see it into their body. And the state police came out and said, yeah, this is, we're going to do this to everybody. We defend that. That's a good idea. We're going to pull you over, including your children. We're going to ram our hands into your body. In fact, they had a big poll out just again last week. We did one a few months ago, uh, but they had another one out, and Americans said, no, we, will, we want proctology exams. See, and that, uh, government wants to put its hands in you. This is rape. Now, no one bought it. The grand jury indicted the state police. They'll get off. But the, the state police in Texas, at least the people running it, want to pull your wife over, aim guns at you, all right, get her up against the car, and go into your body looking for drugs that the government publicly ships in. This is martial law. I had tried everything. I'd cut back the amount of food I was eating. I was lifting weights and jogging, but nothing was working. My body was literally starving for minerals and trace elements as well as key vitamins. And as soon as I had that, I immediately could eat half of what I was eating previously and be satisfied. Now there are hundreds of great products at InfoWarsTeam.com, but I wanna point out the three that have helped me lose 37 pounds in just two months. Products like Beyond Tangy Tangerine, Pollen Burst, and Rebound. When I started taking the Tangy Tangerine and other products every day, I lost more than 37 pounds in just two months. Now that's results. I want to challenge my listeners to go to InfoWarsTeam.com and to order just three of their products, and you will see the changes in the way you look, feel, and in your appetite almost immediately. Start your journey to health and wellness today. InfoWarsTeam.com. By the way, at the bottom of the second hour coming up, I am going to try to do a basic review just off some notes I wrote last night of uh, the new Tom Cruise film, Oblivion. And I I'm just going to say this now. I I'm not a big Tom Cruise fan. I like some of his earlier work. I happen to know a lot of behind-the-scenes stuff about Tom Cruise because he lived with the Sheen family uh, when he was first making it big for about a year. He was best friends with Emilio Estevez. So I don't particularly think he's a very nice person. Um, but uh, to I, I, separating Tom Cruise, and by the way, this is one of his best roles. This movie is an anti-Illuminati tour de force. In fact, this is better than 2001 Space Odyssey. Uh, I mean, I mean, they've got some... Uh, 
some 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 action scenes that are pretty good for the general dumb down public. But I literally, my dad said, yeah, um, I went with, with my dad last night, and uh, he said, um, he said, yeah, uh, you know, I don't usually listen to reviews, but I almost didn't want to go see it until you asked me because all the reviews said that no one could understand it and the plot didn't make sense. And uh, it basically got bad reviews. And I went and saw the movie, and no wonder it got bad reviews. My mouth was hanging open. Hanging open. Because let me tell you something. These, these, uh, the uh, director and his co-writer, uh, Joseph Kaczynski and Arvid Nelson, I want to get these guys on the show. No wonder they came from nowhere and wrote this uh, and uh, got this movie made. Because this film is a Rosetta Stone of what the Illuminati is actually planning. My mouth was, here are the words, hanging open during this. Because this is actually what Ray Kurzweil and all of them think they're going to do from their own writings. Uh, and, and, and listen, this is not a pro-Illuminati revelation of the method um, externalization of the hierarchy. This is a anti-Illuminati, anti-death cult, anti-technocracy, anti-transhumanist film. Anti-technocratic. It's actually got a, it's more of the pro, uh, the uh, vein of uh, perhaps the transhumanist from a genetic perspective, but a spiritual genetics uh, uh, dealing with um, things like ancestral memories, things like that. Uh, and, and again, I don't think of myself as that smart. See, I'm already doing the review right now. I don't think of myself as that smart, and then I just don't get why other people don't get basic stuff. It's like one time I sent a tweet out of the sun and the clouds, and I said, who said the stars only come out at night? And all these people commented on it, and no one got what I was saying. Like, what is this? I mean, there's the sun. It's a star. Who says the stars only come out at night? You know, the darker it gets, the more you can see the stars. I just don't understand how no one understands what this movie is talking about. Every 10 seconds, it's got archetypal messages, and all of them are positive. Now, who knows if uh, you know, we've really got a soul, but if we do have souls, it's when we love each other. That's what makes our souls. And then it's the opposite with the... Uh, it, is, it is really an amazing film. And if you separate out the ending of the movie and replace it with the Illuminati, who are not really illuminating, they're bringing total death, then you've got basically their program and their plan. And uh, these guys are definitely uh, listeners. I, I would bet money, but beyond that, because I haven't even really broken all of this down. I mean, you see Oblivion, and it's the choice. Do you want the Oblivion of the cold-blooded psychopath, or do you want love i mean that's basically what it gets into and and, and you know uh, obviously the film's already been spoiled uh, for people i don't think it spoils it to talk about it but uh, at the bottom of the next hour i'll try to just go, go over the basics actually after the movie recorded some comments i've got to write down uh so that i go over all the points but i sw i got home about 10 30 last night got in bed about 11 sat there with my ipad for about an hour reading reviews and couldn't find one positive review uh, basically, or even the positive ones were tongue in cheek and like, oh yeah, it's got great visuals, but I'm sick of Tom Cruise and I don't quite understand it. And it just goes on and on and on and on. And I, and I think Tom Cruise did a great job in the film. People say they have such a flat affect in it. Well, yeah, of course they have a flat affect. And and the movie is all about compartmentalization and how it's a prison. I mean, I'm telling you, see, the reason I've got to spoil the whole film is because people aren't getting it. So I'm going to do the film a favor today or tomorrow. Um, I'm going to shoot a, a, a breakdown and then show all of what I'm talking about.
I want to open the phones up for first-time callers, as we do a few times a week, to hear what you have to say about the, what's happening in the world. Uh, how they're trying to pass open borders, anti-gun legislation. In fact, guys, will you pull me the stack uh, from uh, Sunday? I never even got to it or just type in California passes gun law, budgets $24 million for gun confiscation. Or just, or just reprint that. I've got to get to that. They are moving on all fronts. Internet taxation, sales tax taxation online. Uh, the whole agenda uh, is barreling forward while the state police across the country take blood without warrants uh, and now put their hands inside of our bodies, uh, as the TSA did to Miss USA. And if you're a TV viewer, we're showing footage of the state police searching two sisters uh, and we haven't even gotten to the part where, where it looks like the cop's trying to force her hand into the body. And again, the state police defended all of that. So that's what I was mentioning earlier about how the government wants in your person, they want in your body, they want to force you to take vaccines, they want to force you to have abortions. That is the globalist policy worldwide. They want to control your life. They see you as a biological android. They see you as obsolete machines. They don't need you anymore. They have robotics. This is the age of the drone, the age of the robot, the age of the autonomous sentient being that the globalists believe they're going to merge with. Merging into the all-seeing eye that burns red. By the way, you know what's incredible? This is why Oblivion hit me so hard last night. Guys, will you pull up the um, Rise of the Machines, End of Humanity, October issue uh, of uh, InfoWars magazine? Or, or go to Weldon, get me a copy right now, please. Back in the warehouse, they kept some back as collector's items. Bring me the second issue, please. <laughs> because nowhere, I looked this up last night, nowhere... Nowhere online, I don't know how they've done it. And I was joking when I said I'd go and take photos to show you. I can just tell you, nowhere online do they show you the, the villain, the bad guy, in oblivion. They, they say they've kept this movie secret like nothing else. And that they're obsessed with that, obviously. Now it's out, so it's not a secret. The bad guy from the movie is on the cover of my magazine from October of last year. Out of my mind. That's why this movie freaked me out so bad. Because again, it, it's an archetype. And these archetypes are things that we already inherently know to be true. Very, very bizarre. But as I said, I'm get to that at the bottom of the hour. Or I can just go to Google and show you. Rise of the machines, rise of... Oh, you got it? There you go. A black pyramid with a large glowing red eye sitting on top of a pile of skulls. Ladies and gentlemen, oblivion. The end of humanity, rise of the robots, DARPA the real Skynet, October surprise. There it is. That was a composite done by the art crew, uh, but my uh, my design. You see, this show is a warning, ladies and gentlemen. The Illuminati, this is what they're planning. This is what they say they're going to do. You understand that? This is an emergency transmission. But let me actually show you the exact bad guy from the movie. Uh, please, this. That right there if you're watching on TV. <laughs> All right, that's enough. Man, it was like a brain boost or something seeing that movie. And you know I don't just come up here and rave about movies. I think they're pretty much all cheesy, even if they're well done. I watch Stanley Kubrick films now and see all the subtleties and the messages. But, but you know, still, uh, it's not as powerful as they were when I was younger. Uh, I don't want to say I'm cynical. I just am well-researched and can see multi-layers into things, as any of you can if you simply open your mind up to the universe.
uh, and become truly illuminated. You see, the Illuminati is a counterfeit of what the God of the universe will actually give you. And it's a pale counterfeit. A shadow of a shadow of a counterfeit. I'm going to give the number out right now. It's 800-259-9231. 800-259-9231. And we will get you up and on the air. You're never going to see a representation of the devil more accurate than what's on your screen right now. That's the devil right there. And what's it doing? It's jacking your humanity and destroying it. And it uses the best of us against us via compartmentalization. All right. Let me get into the news here. Uh, I have an article uh, here where the federal government is looking at forced psychological testing for all Americans. The New Freedom Initiative 2.0. Meanwhile, America is number one in fear, stress, anger, divorce, obesity, antidepressants, etc. Las Vegas hospital accused of dumping psychiatric patients in California. Accused of it? They're doing it all over the country. Bed bugs invade hospitals. Why more patients share rooms with blood-sucking pests? Why are hospitals the most dangerous place to go? Because it's where the government is in control. It's where Rockefeller medicine is in control. <clears throat> if I've got a gunshot wound or a compound fracture or a finger cut off, I'll take the risk to go to the hospital. But if I need something else, I'll go to a little, local, clean, new clinic. And they're trying to federalize those right now. And, and why do I mention that? It's because they're going to force more people on drugs, then you're going to have more mass shootings, and the answer will be more psychologists, more psychiatrists, as the priest guild to go around and drug America out so bad that we fall. Because the world is going to get so horrible, you're going to want drugs to get you out of it. The GMO, the fluoride, the chemicals in the water. When all you really need is to go out and play sports with your friends, climb a hill, go for a swim. And yeah, go get drunk if you want to. I'm not even saying that's the best thing out there, but it's a lot better than Prozac type drugs. They show in major studies, there's several of them, University of Texas study and others, They've got a German study, a Russian study. Drinking is associated with higher IQs. Why is that? Because people that have higher IQs cannot handle it. You can't handle the truth. You can't handle the perception. You can't handle how hardcore reality is. Let me tell you, not being on caffeine, not drinking at night is like being on a drug. Because the world is so real and so vivid and so incredible that you want to go drink a bottle of red wine, eat a big steak, and lay back and watch a football game because reality is hammer blows. Now, there's psychology today. Why intelligent people drink more alcohol. They've got a University of Texas study, too, on higher IQs, living longer. The problem is there's the abuse of it. I mean, you know, sometimes I need to turn my brain off. I know drinking makes me overweight and stuff. I don't drink that much. Had a couple drinks with my dad last night at the movie. What do you do? What do you do knowing all this? You know, that's what I think every day. I almost feel ashamed. Like, I don't almost feel ashamed. I am ashamed. I am ashamed that I dropped the ball because I need to do a better job for myself and you and my family, everybody else, and so do you. How I got caught up trying to convince people it's staged, how I got caught up in all the minutia when the big story is martial law in Boston and citizens being treated like slaves and, and then debating would the government provocateur something. They've been caught over and over again. You know, I should just focus on the thousands of declassified programs, some of which had thousands of dead apiece, 
where they nerve gassed and bioweapon our own troops, foster kids, force sterilize people, radiate foster kids, all declassified. Our government, since the 30s, has been running eugenics covert operations, thousands of which have been declassified. The last ones declassified are from the 90s, where they kill people. Oh, but if they take a foster child in New York in 2004, uh, the social workers finally spoke out and deliver little black kids, mainly eight year olds. They told that they tell the mothers they always profile. OK, you got a two year old. We're going to take a two year old. unless You sign this waiver. We're going to take your eight year old healthy, by the way. And they took him to a big pharma facility. This was in the New York News only once or twice because whistleblowers went public. The media had the courage to cover it. Then they got shuffled under the rug. You heard about kids being given deadly AIDS drugs who didn't even have HIV. Because they needed, quote, healthy subjects like a rat. You know, oh, this is this this shampoo is uh, animal testing free. It's like, oh, good, good. What about human testing free? Oh, well, they just take your economy away and then make you have to go to pay the rent and, and have medical experiments. Well, not just testing d deadly uh, chemotherapy drugs on kids. They took black kids because, you know, that blacks have been the, you know, the test group all along uh, you know, who've, who've been allowed to be tested on. You let the hookers operate there, let the drugs operate there. The, you know, what do they say in The Godfather? They're animals anyways. Let them lose their souls. Well, the globalists see everybody as animals except them. When in truth, they're beyond the animals. They have lost their humanity. They're psychopathic. They're cold-blooded. They're a joke, and they've got a bunch of nobodies working for them on power trips <clears throat> who want to be warriors but really are just bullies <clears throat> because they're scared to death of real war. They're too weak-minded to face what's happening. And I, I, I remember reading, I think it was in New York Daily News, you name it, about you know, one family where they told the mother, we'll take your two-year-old if you don't do this, and they took the child and then they tested pesticides on him for a month until he tried to get away, so they, they chained him down. And then they administered the pesticides in higher and higher dosages till he died in a pesticide study. And finally, the CPS went, you know, uh, the, these kids are dying. This isn't saw. This isn't hostile where you go and think it's cool to watch women tortured, you know, and live through that and kind of, ooh, that, that makes me feel powerful. See, you're, you're scared deep down. You're so powerless that you get off vicariously seeing simulated torture. Don't worry. There are real little kids being tortured right now. There's medical experiments in China with little kids. Don't worry. Don't worry. And it's going to happen to you. You're being experimented on by the vaccines and the water and the food. You think you're going to go watch this in a movie at your little low level? and that it's not going to be done to you. Don't worry, you're going to die horribly painful, tortured deaths. Don't worry, you love hurting innocents. God is going to smash you into a thousand pieces, but very slowly by letting the system do it to you. Yeah, there's a headline. Organic consumers, EPA to allow pesticide testing on orphans and mentally handicapped children. That was an article, I think, of months before it came out. Uh, but... Um, and, and, and I remember the article described the little black boy. He stopped struggling. They administered the final dosages. And he died. <laughs> oh, it's so liberal. Like the baby swimming in the toilet. And people on my YouTube made jokes on InfoWars. Going, there are too many people, Jones. You know, don't tell them what to do. You know, the baby's getting exercise. <laughs> I'll get you and your little dog, too. Oh, yeah, you're real powerful, all you evil people. I bet you'd be real tough in the ring with somebody with a battle axe. Here, here's your battle axe. Here's a good guy up against any day. He'll smash your guts into the ground. But only because we know we're dealing with some scum that's got to be put down. We don't enjoy it. We'll crush you for the innocence, not because we enjoy it. You're cowards. You're cowards, and the only sick satisfaction I've got, and I repent for it, is knowing this evil system you're bringing in is going to tear your guts out slow. And you're damned to hell after that. Make sure you know that. <sighs> Do not stare too long into the abyss lest you become the abyss. God, I watched the police in those videos in Boston stomping around, bugging their eyes out with crazy looks on their faces and just saying, open your door and coming in and pointing guns at family, people in their own houses shooting video of it. 
and the cops march and the compliant media showing shots of like a guy running with his daughter and the cop helping him you know only show that image instead the real images of just driving by just like i saw at the g20 when uh, rob Dew was there on the news they would say no one's allowed out during the day period and they would drive around in residential areas and they would see like you know 12 year old kids playing football in their front yard and they'd aim sound cannons at them just this lust to pull your wife over and ram their hand up her and then you know take her sister and ram their hand up her and then and 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 and, and just the need to okay there's some people that you know kids thinking this is america you can be out in your front yard let's hit them with sound cannons boom and watch those slaves run, watch those taxpayers run, drive them into, into submission now. Show no mercy, do what must be done. And the Wall Street Journal comes out and says, America is now a battleground. We're gonna have checkpoints and troops. It's gonna be so sexy and, you know, billion dollar and $10 million contracts to, you know, congressmen's wives. And we're gonna spy on you. And we're the new elites with red carpets and jet copters and i mean it's just a bunch of guys i mean look look at hagel punch up infowars.com look at hagel you know wearing his 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 turtleneck and his black sunglasses because you know he was involved in black ops you know they they all think he's cool he's sexy yeah he's been involved in really dark stuff it's really cool it's really cool yeah, and it's really cool to do all this. When I come back, I'm going to cover the martial law news and then go to your phone calls. But look at it right here. Drudge Report has it linked. Boston wrong. Residents ordered out of homes at gunpoint by SWAT teams. So now the president said if there's one gunman on the loose, whether it's true or not, all of you are suspects. All of you are criminals. And we're coming in your house just like Katrina. And next it's coming in your house to take your guns. And it's all about planting the flag, setting the precedent, showing you and showing police nationwide, this is what we do. And the police have ceremony after ceremony on TV where they're heroes and just grandstanding up there, absolute mental illness. Absolute mass mental illness. What are they getting us ready for? What are they, and Bloomberg says, we've got to stop our interpretation of the Constitution. We have to change it. We have to get rid of it because the criminals need to be protected in government. Hi, Ted Anderson, president of Midas Resources. With over 30 years of experience in the precious metals business, I can tell you without a doubt, we are facing the most dangerous and volatile times, not just in the United States, but worldwide. Peace of mind is gold and silver. Now is the time to invest in gold. When it comes to bullion coins, our prices are competitive and the closest to melt. If it's numismatics you're looking for, we have some of the best deals out there. Visit MidasResources.com today or go to Infowars.com and click on the link to see our daily specials. Here's an example of one of our long-term specials we've been offering for more than a year. Two silver dollars from the turn of the last century, plus two powerful films, The Obama Deception and The American Dream. We also add in the book, Dishonest Money, all for $72 and free shipping. The most trusted name in precious metals is Midas Resources. Call 1-800-686-2237 or go to Infowars.com. I'm Ted Anderson with Midas Resources. Sources. We are now only entering the edge of a global financial superstorm, the likes of which the planet has never seen. Here in the United States, the private Federal Reserve is giving more than $85 billion of taxpayer money a month to themselves and other offshore foreign banks. And the worst part is, we have to pay the bank's interest on the money we give them. There is now a race between the global central bank mafia cartels to see who can devalue their country's currencies the fastest. We are already seeing big increases in inflation at the grocery store and the gas line. This will eventually lead to hyperinflation. More than a dozen top globalists like George Soros have been buying record amounts of gold while at the same time bad-mouthing it to the public. Don't just listen to what they say. Watch what they do. For more than 6,000 years of recorded human history, gold has been the ultimate hedge against uncertain times and inflation.
Before investing in metals, it is important to do your own research and find a reputable company. Midas Resources has the highest Better Business Bureau rating of an A+. Unfortunately, very few precious metal companies can boast that. Midas Resources has assembled one of the most educated, researched, and professional teams of brokers in the industry. The evidence is overwhelming. In uncertain times, gold and silver is safe harbor. Now is the time to invest in gold. Call 800-686-2237 and Midas Resources will mail you 10 reasons to own gold absolutely free. No shipping. It's absolutely free. And finally, Ted Anderson wants to challenge you to find any deal that comes close to his two silver dollars at cost with free shipping with two free films and a book for $72. That's more than $160 value for $72 shipping included. Click the link at InfoWars.com to go to the MidasResources.com specials page. Brought to you by MidasResources.com and Ted Anderson. The trusted name in precious metals. Yeah, you know, Rush is coming to Austin tonight. I think some of the crew's going to see it. I, I'm not going to go. I'm going to go hang out with my family. But, um, yeah, they're anti-New World Order. They've been anti-New World Order for a long time, but now a lot of their new music is just a total anti-New World Order. And the good news is more and more good people are realizing what's happening out there. Uh, the film Cloud Atlas uh, was anti-New World Order. Uh, I mean, there are a lot of people really starting to get the dehumanization that's taking place and realizing that there's no future if we don't turn things around. The reason I brought that up is John Baum was pointing that out to me. And yes, you're right, John. You're right. I agree with you. Uh, look, uh, we're going to come back and take your calls. Uh, Anthony, John, Shelley, Daniel, Jacob, and others. It's open phones today. No guest. I need to get to listening to my uh, message that I left myself or, or my voice memos uh, so that I can um, write down all the notes I've got on my Oblivion uh, review I want to do at the bottom of the next hour. Who knows? I may do it at the start of the next hour, but then I'll never get to it if I don't get to it soon. Um, so I've got that. And you've just got all this incredible stuff happening, uh, all the evidence this was scripted. And then you get things like this in the Huffington Post. California gun confiscation bill passes, approves $24 million to expedite illegal gun seizure. And it says it makes your semi-autos basically illegal and will begin the door-to-door -door confiscation of 40,000 handguns and assault weapons illegally owned by Californians. SB 140. <laughs> oh, man. There you go. But, oh, there's no gun confiscation coming. And, again, it's not only that they did this martial law drill. They're saying this shows this is the new America, the Wall Street Journal says. This is how you're going to live for your safety. For three dead people in an event that's got fingerprints of the globalist all over it. And then you've got the hyping. And they're saying there will be more bombings. The good news is they were going to go with the Tea Party. That was clear. We derailed them, so they went with their fallback patsies, who the FBI knew and had watched for years and knew where they lived, and they were at their houses and at their dorms like nothing had happened until they got the word, the mother says, and then something scared them, so they fled. And then you've got what the a couple witnesses, the witnesses are saying conflicting things, too. But we have the unprecedented, and now Kurt Nemo has added images uh, to the Watson article uh, that uh, Drudge linked to. You go to drudgereport.com in the middle column. It says Boston residents ordered out of homes. And then you notice the Daily Mail's under it, and they added more videos. That, that's our article's the original. They wrote off our article and give us credit in the Daily Mail, but that's what I told Nemo this morning is just to add more videos and photos because we've literally got hundreds of photos and dozens of videos. I'm trying to dig up the one. I know we were taping when it happened when CNN uh, showed um, the woman at her house that's right by a park with her kids and they fly over in the day and go, get in your house. I mean, I'm sorry, man. I'm not getting in my house. I've had enough of you. The borders are wide open. Illegal aliens are above the law. Nothing even against them. The point is, is that is, this is all about training the American citizens that were like milk cows or something. And I'm not your slave, and I'm sick of it. They use security as the new slavery. We're going to enslave you to keep you safe. No thanks. I'll take my Bill of Rights and Constitution. Everything that's happening is 180 degrees the opposite of the Bill of Rights and Constitution. Let me point this out to you. 
I told you for 17, almost 18 years, this was coming. Now, it was, I was on here about two years as a mainline libertarian before I really woke up. So for 15, 16 years, I've told you this. And I went to urban warfare drills and watched Marines training to take you out of your house and shoot you in the back of the head and take your guns and put you in a FEMA camp in America. And I put that in my film, Police Day 2000, and I interviewed police chiefs and others who were all vets who said this is a martial law conditioning drill. Chief Ale Philippus, Thomas Sanchez, you name it. These are police chiefs and people I'm listing here who I have on video. I've been warning you. I told you this was coming. Visit InfoWars.com and PrisonPlanet.com. When you're on the site, you can also tune in 24 hours a day to my daily radio broadcast. There's also a free iPhone app to listen to the syndicated radio show when and where you want. <laughs>